Make a funded engineer if you haven't heard one. One million percent. And didn't reach a payout. That has blown my fucking mind. What's going on everyone? How are we doing? It's just finished having some lunch. It's New York session now, so I'm just watching charts. EU's running away from me, which it seems to love doing at the moment. But um, yeah, this morning I was looking for shorts up here. Uh, didn't get the entry that I wanted on the 5M. It just went without me. One thing I am currently tracking and logging is being able to get in those trades no matter what. Potentially have a way to do that. I'm just working out if it's beneficial. But essentially, once I see what I need to see, I'm going to get in anyway. So the issue I have is sometimes it won't come back and retest. Therefore, I may be able to just find a way to just get in the trade, get in the move. Potentially 4%. In this leg, I probably would have taken something off when it ran this liquidity, being completely honest. Obviously, in hindsight, it's easy to, you know, say I would have held that, whatever. I was looking to see if we'd come up and take this out in New York and carry on for a continuation, but probably going to run away. We've got uh, PMI, is it PMI this afternoon? What have we got this afternoon? Yeah, we've got PMI at three. So potentially that'll be it for the day. One thing I want to talk about was the true Forex funds kind of drama at the moment if you like at the months i know their customer service got quite bad and they started to experience some issues now they've been kicked off meta quotes and i'm what i'm hearing that a lot of firms are going to encounter a lot of issues in the us especially over the next few months uh, due to the licensings they hold obviously with the us you know not being allowed to trade cfds and obviously prop firms essentially allowing that obviously you've seen ftmi already pull out of the us a lot of other firms are putting things in place by the looks of it or probably will follow suit um, so this may be a thing that we see continue to happen. I do think True Forex funds will be back. I don't think they'll be gone forever, but again, we don't know, right? And this is the realities of this game, and it's why nothing's certain, nothing's absolute. It's one why I always say diversify 1 million percent. Make sure that you haven't got all your eggs in one basket, because if you do, this can happen. All of a sudden, your funding's stripped away. If you were max funded with True Forex funds only, and this happened, now you've got no funding. And again, if that is you, you know, it's not a nice position to be in, but all you can do is learn from this. It's literally all you can do. Learn from it. Go again. Best advice would be to get three, four, five different prop firms, 100Ks or 200Ks in place and utilize them to your advantage. Also, I've said it before. I will continue to say it again. More and more people are beginning to listen, but I would highly recommend jumping on DarwinX. What's going on, people? It's Arab from the future here. Just a quick one. DarwinX have been kind enough. In light of recent events, people losing accounts and whatnot, they've been kind enough to give me 100 discount codes which pretty much will get you Darwin X and the sign up for 10 euros. So you'll save 85 euros on the initial sign up. I've only got 100 of these. Get yourself some dough. If you're on the fence with it, now's the chance to get involved. Now Nando's is actually more expensive than getting Darwin X. So get yourself sorted, get yourselves building your record. You can use that record to attract, attract investors. You can also get allocations. The allocations has gone up. So yeah, don't sleep on it. Back to the vlog. Enjoy. What's happening, people? It's Tuesday. Currently just had lunch. I wanted to get in this morning up here. I was looking to see if this would get swept and then get in. However, we'd taken this out over here. It actually married up with DXY. Um, and then, yeah, it just remitigated and off we went. So, didn't let me in, unfortunate, but it is what it is. Currently looking now for short still, but mindful this low has been done. So we could see a much deeper pullback. So I'm aware of that. So we'll see what happens there. I've got school runs and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, a little bit of a quiet week so far in terms of trading. Two great trades this week just not let me in, uh, which has been a bit unfortunate. And again, like I said yesterday, it's something I'm looking into. Is there a way in? Today there isn't, like because it comes early. I don't want to start trading pre-Frankfurt or in Frankfurt. I always find when I traded Frankfurt before, sometimes Frankfurt works, yes, but other times London works. And if you trade Frankfurt, you have to be willing to take the L and trade London. And then you're opening yourself up to more losses, and I don't like that. Um, so for me personally, I'd rather just start at eight. If I miss something in Frankfurt, it is what it is. Usually there's a New York continuation, but it also could be the New York reversal. So we'll see what happens. What's happening, people? Just here watching EU. So I thought I would jump on this quickly. Uh, funded trader shared a statistic that apparently one trader from September to December last year spent $112,000 and didn't reach a payout. Now, I just want to highlight how bonkers that is. For one, you need an edge, yeah? Like, let's get it straight. If you don't have an edge, you have no proof of concept, but you've seen someone online do it, you have to remember they likely have spent a long time in the game and they have a system. Or they got very lucky, right? But spending 112k on challenges to make no money blows my fucking mind. Like, either you're loaded and it's a bit of fun, which even still doesn't make it okay, or you've borrowed it, you've credit carded it, you've debted it, whatever you've done, 
Now the issue is, even if you pass that 100k or that 200k, to make 112k back just to be back at break even, you might not have it in you because you might not be consistent, you might not have an edge and you just thought you could flump it or fluke it. Please, please don't do shit like that. Like genuinely, if you've got that much dough and you're thinking about getting into trading, just come to Elysium. Literally within that space of time, if you'd came to Elysium Capital with that kind of money, you'd have made around $39,000 before we take our 30%. That's pure profit, that's yours, doing absolutely nothing, not having to lift a finger. Like, if you've got that kind of money, don't go and throw it into prop. Diversify it or split it, by all means, take some. But even still, don't put 60 grand into prop challenges. Like, for me personally, that actually makes me feel sick. I wouldn't sleep at night. And I'm not sure if I'd with the like, salt in the wounds of whoever it is, whether you watch my videos or not. You probably don't, because I would, uh, I'd like to think that I give off that you shouldn't do that, but maybe, maybe I don't. Um... But yeah, it's just mental. Like, at what point does someone step in and say, yo, God, like, dude, I think maybe you need to stop. Like, the math's not mathing. Honestly, it absolutely blows my mind. I actually can't believe it. Like, genuinely, that has blown my fucking mind. The one thing that puts me off this trade is the positioning. Like I said before, we took this low out. Mindful, we could just ping back. But I am seeing that kind of continuation of bearish order flow ever since NFP. Um, on the daily... Obviously, we're about to attack this where we pretty much wicked it. Um, have we set that out, actually? It's 238. 225. Yeah, so we've whipped that low now. So you could see a pullback, which is the only thing that's got me on the fence with taking this short down here, is that this could just become the reversal and we could see a deeper pullback. Um, so I will watch it for a little bit. Still got an hour and 15 minutes or so. So I'll see how this develops. And I'll let you know if I actually get in it. I'm not in it at the moment. The tool's just there chilling. 112k, man. That shit's mad. Good morning, everyone. How we doing? Hope you're all good. It is Wednesday. So yesterday I did end up getting in that trade, but I had to. I didn't record because I was on my way to do school run and stuff. Uh, but I got in down here, uh, basically over here on the five M. So I go back. Uh, so I got in up here. When it came back, I got in in here in the end, um, and it took me out. And to be honest. Like that was a very much a B plus setup for me. Uh, not even a B plus, it was just B. Obviously we'd taken out this to the left. Um, we'd taken it out twice, in theory, because we wicked it over here, and then we wicked it again yesterday. This was like a clear kind of wick everyone out, reversal kind of play. After London had sold off, which I couldn't get in, which was the move I actually wanted, uh, I then took the L here, and definitely avoidable. Right, it is a hundred percent an avoidable loss. However, I took it because I was like, I'm willing to take the risk here. In hindsight, could have done without taking it because I am on a losing streak. So those trades are where you can, if you're on a losing streak, you can argue like those kind of trades that are like B setups. Should you really be taking them? You should be waiting for the high, the high probable A plus stuff, right? If you can score your trades, it's quite difficult depending on how you trade. Um, it would have been better to maybe sit out, you know. So for February, I'm actually on a free loss streak. Uh, I haven't had any wins in Feb yet. So we'll see what comes. The good thing is, usually when I'm on a loss streak, three or four is my max, and then I go on a winning streak. So being able to score your trades is really important. If you're in profit, you could potentially risk more uh, because you're like, well, I've got I've got it to burn, right? So let's say you're 5% up for the month and that trade comes and you go, well, I've seen this work, I'm willing to take it, which is why I took it. Then, you know, you're willing to risk that percent, right? But if you're in drawdown, you could argue it's not good. You shouldn't be taking low quality trades. So again, that was something to mark myself on and reflect on. And look, I'm not perfect, right? No matter how long I've been doing this, no matter how much money I've made from it, I still have errors and I still make mistakes. I'm just a student of the game. The market will humble you on site as soon as you get arrogant and think you're better than it. So I'll keep you posted if I get any trades. I've got a busy day today. It's Mia's birthday tomorrow. She's going to be seven, which is crazy to think. Uh, I remember when she was... Well, my little baby. She'll always be a little baby. You know what it's like when you're a parent. But yeah, she's grown up, man. It's mad. And it makes you realise like how quick time goes. Like, Kira's going to be 13 this year. Mia's going to be seven. Like, yeah, it's mental. So kind of like, like to rock up your bum at the same time. I've got a lot of things I want to do with the girls and experience. And it's down to me to do it. So I just need to get my head in the game and uh, take the opportunities that are in front of me. And obviously, I'm grateful for everything I've got. But I know where I need to be and where I will be. And it's now just a case of getting there. Rocky start to Feb, but not all months are going to be blue. Not all months you're going to make money. It's just when you're in that period, you have to keep composed and you have to not let it get to you or start looking at a new way to change something. Because if I change something, I might not take that win. And then what happens is, let's say it does win, I've missed the win, and then I could go on a loss streak again. And this is what a lot of people end up doing is they miss those crucial wins because they change something or they adapt. 
and they put themselves in a bigger loss streak. So just bear in mind, like if you've got a system that you believe in, you've tested it, back testing, forward testing, and actually live, you do have to just deal with these periods, and that is trading, and it's why it carries uncertainty, and it's why it's tough, but the rewards are huge, right? I was talking to a friend yesterday, and um, you know he had a 6% day, which is sick, and obviously, like on, I think he's got 700k um, funding or whatever, and he's just like, mate, it, it's serious money, do you know what I mean? It's like 40k. And it just makes you realize, like, you you know, you only need that one, two, three good months. You can completely change a lot of things for you. So keep going, but don't don't be focused on that. Focus on the process that's going to get you there. And that will be following your edge, turning up every day, being disciplined, being patient, journaling. Whatever it is that you do, do it consistently and just let the markets do its thing. It's difficult. Trust me, I'm on a free loss streak. And naturally, when you take that third hour, you're like... A bit rough you know with comms it ain't three percent it's like nearly four so you're just like oh this is hard you know what we're gonna do but you just have to be thick-skinned and go i've seen this before if you're in a nine loss streak you've never seen that before you do have to start asking questions like why am i in this much of a loss streak but again over a sample of a hundred trades it, it can happen with a 50 percent win rate you could lose i think it's six trades in a row something like that so again something to bear in mind but yeah um, I've got a lot of errands to run today, got to do a lot of different bits and bobs, got me his cake, I'm hoping turns up today, cake looks banging, so I'll show you that when it comes, uh, I'll get some prezi bits and bobs and all that sort of stuff, so obviously looking forward to that, it's going to be sick, and then it's my birthday the week after, it's going to be 30, which is mad, but um, I feel good, I, honestly, anyone that knows me from like my old life, uh, I'll put some pictures up so you can see, but people that, that see me, like my barber, he always says it, He's like, bro, you're one of the only people I know that's like aged backwards. Like, honestly, I used to look probably 40 years old. Like, I just had 10 cans of Stella and come out of the pub. Now, when I look at those photos, I'm like, wow. You know, that was back when I was like 24. And like, sort of six years on, I'm like, whoa, I look better and healthier. So again, you know, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what age you're at, you can make a change. It's down to you to make that change. I decided I wanted to make a change for my health and to be a better role model for the kids and myself. You know, it's important. So I did that. And... um yeah, the pictures are mad. It's always good to look back on and it's why you should take pictures and capture memories and capture moments. I think it's super important. But yeah, I'm looking for shorts, like I say. We'll see if anything comes. Obviously, you know, when I'm doing these vlogs as well, I'm just trying to be real and I'm trying to be raw. Nothing is edited out or scripted or planned. It's literally just picking up the camera and going, right, I'm going to talk. I keep it real. There's no need to hide anything. There's no need to fluff anything up. Yeah, I'm going to crack on and obviously I'll pick this up if something exciting happens. Catch you in a bit. What's happening, people? How are we doing? I've been, uh, we've been playing teachers this morning and I got a well done because of my resilience and hard work. Winning. But um, I just want to jump on quickly. Obviously, yesterday, I was going to film it last night, but I was tired when it all happened. But obviously, Funded Engineer, if you haven't heard by now, which you probably have because this hasn't come out for a few days, obviously, they have unfortunately been terminated by FPFX, which are the tech company for a lot of prop firms. Um, I'm not sure exactly which firms. But I know they work with a lot of them and obviously they take a cut on percentage of payouts and whatever it is. And supposedly some something's got leaked saying that, you know, funded engineer were faking payouts or faking what they were earning to pay them less. And then the tech providers found out and they've kind of been ruthless and just cut them off. Again, it is kind of hearsay at the moment. But what I will say is a massive tech provider like that that's making silly money a month. And when I say making silly money, I mean like silly, silly money. That business is worth millions upon millions. Like, it would seem weird for them just to kick them out unless something had happened. Someone said, you know, they're jealous because they got their own tech and that. I really don't think it's that deep at all. Like, this company's big. So, something's happened. Obviously, it puts a little bit of a bit of taste in everyone's mouth because we don't know what. Obviously, Tristian and Funded Engineer have come out and released statements. Again, obviously, media responses. It's going to be like everyone's media trained when it comes to that sort of stuff. I've lost an account potentially at the moment. It is what it is. This is not the end of the world. The account wasn't exactly flying. A lot of people out there that have got funding with them, that are live with them. And, you know, I see someone tweet yesterday, they lost 400 with MFF, 400 with True Forex Funds, 400 with Funded Engineer. Like, you know, that can completely change someone's entire trading career. Like, losing that much funding in that kind of space of time. It can be a massive knock-on effect. It can obviously stress you out and, and obviously put pressure on you. You've got, you know, you're used to having income. You've got a couple of million in funding and all of a sudden it's gone. You know, keep going. You've done it once. You can do it again. Uh, for me at the moment, I'm going to probably slow down on buying loads of accounts. As I said before, I don't want crazy amounts anyway. I just want probably a mil in the space. I'm pro prop firm. I just don't like any kind of shady business happening. And when people fire shots at people, but they're doing shady stuff too, it doesn't it doesn't look good. Now, again, I don't know. I could be completely misinformed. So I'm not going to say that's for sure. And obviously, there's always going to be people that don't like props that are going to jump on it now and say, this is why you shouldn't use prop. Listen, 
props are still amazing and you should always use them because let's face it, where do you get that kind of capital for that kind of money? If you can actually trade, you can't. But you should definitely have a personal. You should definitely be on Darwin X. But just wanted to share that. And obviously, again, you've got the Falcon Fund, right? That's another means. Again, that has massive investors. You have to either be a part of Falcon, I believe, for three or six months, or you have to be in Rewired. So again, that could be another avenue. They're not just letting anybody in, which again is a good thing because it shows they're not just looking to make a rinse up or anything. It doesn't work like that for them. So um, yeah, I'll leave links for that as well. But I'm just going to uh, crack on my morning. Little one's going to go to school in a minute. We're going to do prezies and that properly when we get back cake all that jazz so i'll let you know what that's saying and um yeah i've got a busy day i've got quite a lot of calls today quite a lot of meetings and obviously see what the charts are saying quickly let me just record this quick one sec what's going on people so just jumped in eu longs well i say just i'm on a call with kieran at the minute it's just chatting some elysium bits so i was a little bit late to the chart but yeah just jumped in this uh risk is off looking to target this high see what we do when we get above this um this is there because I was going to get in again, but I didn't re-enter it. So just on the one position on all the accounts, uh, run in, well, it's ran about 2.76. Uh, I want to see what happens when we get here. And then depending on what it does and how we correlate on the DXY, I potentially will close out because it is a massive counter trend play. Obviously, we're against all of this momentum, but I did wake up this morning and decide I was bullish to catch back up on this call. So I just thought I would quickly intervene. The little lady will be home soon as well. Obviously, birthday cake, presents, all that sort of stuff. So I'm super excited for that. So I just need to finish up a few bits and then can take the rest of the afternoon and evening off. So uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up Thursday. I'll pick this up tomorrow. I'm actually in London tomorrow as well. So lots of stuff happening. I'll bring you along for that. Make a good wish. wish. Yeah. Cold, it's wet, it's windy. But I got two legs, I got a coat, and I'm on my way to London. No, I'm not walking, I'm getting a train. But it's very easy for me to have, you know, found an excuse to not go or not walk. I know I need to get my steps in, it's part of my habit, it's part of my routine. So yeah, I'm on my way to London. It is the Falcon seven year anniversary. So I just wanna say a massive shout out to those guys, especially Mark. Obviously I had a vision seven years ago, he's executed on it. Great to see what they're building and what they're doing and it's great to call them a friend. You know, they're there for me if I ever need anything. Obviously, vice versa and you know, it's just great to have those sort of people in your circle that are driven, that are motivated, that can push you further, that are telling you like, come on, you know, you can reach your full potential, you can do this, you can do that. They keep you in check. You know, sometimes you need a bit of tough love as well. And those are the sort of people that will give it to you. You don't always want people around you that will just tell you what you want to hear. It doesn't get you anywhere. But um, yesterday's trade, ended up hitting TP, closed out at like three and a bit R. As soon as we took that high, I was waiting to see how we reacted. We did have quite an aggressive push, but Mia had just got home. Obviously it was her birthday, so the last thing I want to be doing is managing a trade or mucking around on her birthday. For me, that's like, work's done, everything's done. Let's, let's lock in now, open presents, smash a load of cake, eat some sweets, enjoy ourselves, it's your birthday. Um, so yeah, she had a great day. So big shout out to Tom, because my guy bought me a coffee last week on YouTube and I respect that. So shout out to you, man. Hope you're watching this, hope you've had a fantastic week and I really appreciate the gesture. It's very nice, you didn't have to do that. So yeah, big ups to you, man. Big ups to everyone, innit? Big ups to all of you, like everyone that watches, everyone that tunes in, I appreciate all of you more than you know. It's great to see that we're building this real strong connection, like a family bond. It sounds cringe, but that's what it is. Been doing this now for two and a half years. I've not sold out, I've not done anything ridiculous. I don't just try and get clout or clickbaity shit. We share it, we share things that are real and I'm that help you guys and girls. So yeah, shout out to you lot. Forever. I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better okay. yeah. Ain't no errors, baby, it's a new era I wake up early, feeling rich like I'm Kesha I get to the paper, boy extra, extra. Fuck with me, you know that I got it Come with me, let's take a trip to the islands We up on the jet, we'll do more than just fly on it Stand on that hill, you gon' die on it Boom. There's a lot of people out there right now They're probably struggling with their trading They're probably finding it hard What allowed you to keep going? Did you always believe you'd get to where you are now? 100%. You, know, you, you remind me of a story. Right? So on the train here, uh, a girl from my school, that like, I've not seen in like 15, 16 years, came up to me and says, like, hi, Mark. Like, I, she was in my form. And she said, you won't remember this. I don't know why she came out with this. Said, you won't remember this. But in year nine, you said you would always be a trader. And I was like, what? Like, to be honest, I forgot that. I said, you would always be a trader. She was like, you were so young, but you were so assured of yourself. And really thinking about it, there's some childhood friends that are here, like if we're here with me today, 
I've always been like that. Like the nature to want to see people do well. Like even when I didn't have any money, like growing up around humble beginnings, if I'd seen my friends capable of a bit more, I would always try and like motivate them, even when I had nothing. So I think to me, it's always been within my nature. So to be able to see something that I think I've unlocked in terms of the mentality and attitude, because strategy is one thing, but at the end of the day, you know what it's like. You've gone through the roller coasters of mindset. If you don't have it, it's not going to be there in place. So for me, the keeping on going, I was just clear on what my objective was. I don't think most people, like what you said, they want to make a bit of money. They're not actually thinking why they're doing what they're doing. I'm interested in building a massive ecosystem where people feel safe knowing that, right, they've got everything I could possibly need to make this a long-term career. And then I would genuinely, I would be, I would be disgusted with myself if I was to only go at 60%. I was like, if I'm going to do this, I've got to go the whole way through. Otherwise, I let people down, you know, it's not fair. Yeah, yeah, I think it makes sense. Something I can attest to as well is like, obviously actually having a, a purpose further than money. I was talking to someone earlier and they were saying, you know, once you get to a certain point, did you find anything changed? And the biggest thing for me has always been, and I think we share a similar why in that, is to be able to do what we want, when we want, whenever we want, however we want, 100%. right? And I think when you get to that point, you need something stronger than just some numbers, right? Numbers are infinite. And I think a lot of people are struggling with that. Maybe that acceptance or that guidance of like, an insecurity from the past, you know, are they being dragged from an insecurity that maybe they didn't have money, maybe their childhood wasn't the most fruitful, so they think the money will fix it. But often, did you find that when you hit certain levels, not a lot changed in terms of the money, it was the actual journey that, that was more fulfilling? Did you find that? Yeah, you don't think about it in the moment, but you often think that you're going to get a certain amount of money and then you're going to be happy. But the reality is, you don't end up thinking about that. That's just a really quick thing. Like to me, do you know what is scary to me from my experience is how comfortable you get with a new thing. Like let's say it's a Ferrari. You get comfortable with it in like 10 minutes. And to think about how much time and energy was put into how you think you're gonna feel when you get it, for it to just be, uh, it wasn't that important. Like it's sick, but I'm actually more impressed that I've become the certain type of individual it actually feels like I deserve this, that feels worthy of this. Like, look how much more confident I've become. You start to value the things that you didn't think that you would value. What did you think about being here so far, by the way? Mate, it's incredible. Like, every time I come here, I leave buzzing. Mm. And every person that's here, even people, I've spoken to people today that have flown in from different parts of the world, they, have, they don't know anyone, they'll come up to you, they're polite, they're friendly, and not one person today has been negative. Mm. And to have a room full of this many people, who might not be where they want to be, but no one's negative is a testimony to what you've built. Yeah. One million percent. Appreciate that, mate. Yeah, great day. Lovely to see what these guys and girls have built. You know, the community, the vibes, unbelievable. Had a lot of people come up to me today saying they watch the channel and take value. And again, big ups to all of you if you're watching and you've gotten this far. Appreciate that because it's nice to know. Like I've always said before, I just talked to a camera. So meeting some of you in, in real life and obviously chatting to you has been absolutely incredible. But one person really stood out today and I want to say a massive shout out to you for coming up to me. Not that I needed it, but it's really, really nice to know that, you know, I did this channel to share the realities of trading. When I first started, there was just the typical Rolexes, Lamborghinis, make loads of money before you sort of had breakfast. And I wanted to start the channel to kind of, you know, be transparent, be honest, share my journey, document my journey, be able to look back on it, look back on my growth. Change the way the industry is perceived. Obviously it's not glamorous, it's not nice, but at the end of the day, it's reality. And someone came up to me today and um, they said that, you know, when I was talking about my uh, gut pain that I've had, you know, pre-Christmas, I obviously said I got a blood test and got some different scans and that done. It actually inspired them to go and get themselves a blood test and they actually found out in that blood test certain results that if they'd left, you know, it could have become really bad and they were able to get the attention, medical attention and care that they needed in order to, you know, truly in order to get themselves back on track. And had I not mentioned it in that video, had they not watched it, potentially they wouldn't have done that. Now, you know, they want to give me kudos. I give them kudos for taking action and actually listening. And again, I just want to reiterate, like, health is everything. And it's really important that you don't sleep on it. It's really important that you don't, you know, brush it to a side, have pride or ego or whatever it might be that prevents you from doing those things. And, um, you know, if you can seek help, or you feel like something's not right, or something's not going well, or you don't feel yourself, you know yourself better than anyone, then please do something about it. Um, because yeah, it's, uh, it's important. Without our health, we've got nothing, right? You can build all the wealth in the world. If you don't have your health, what's the point? So yeah, big ups to that person. I'm not gonna say who it is and stuff, you know, private matters, whatever. But I just wanted to share it because 
it was really it really hit me in the feels like it's very it's not very often that I'm sort of taken back but that got me quite emotional and we were having quite a deep chat they have kids too and we were talking about some things and you know at one point I could see them getting a little bit teary eyed and yeah it's just powerful and it's the power of this sort of thing it's the power of community it's the power of being around like-minded individuals and it's the power of the channel and what we've built and you know where we're headed and the sky's the limit I urge you just please do me a favor like share subscribe whatever you want to do it helps a lot and without further ado that wraps up this week hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you all next week peace and love gang <laughs>